My name is Katie Burnett, and this is the story of my life. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts on October 21st, 1989. I am the youngest of three, and I have two older brothers named Ryan and Michael. I am extremely close to my family, and I feel very blessed to have them. To this day, my family has intense, over-the-top Boston pride, and we continue to cheer for Boston teams, despite the fact that we live in California. When I was three, my family moved to Tennessee, and I spent much of my early childhood there. The five of us did everything together, and my mom even got into the habit of calling us the Five Amigos. We were always outdoors. Most weekends, we went hiking, camping, fishing, or we went on some other crazy adventure. One spring, after a few years of bliss in Tennessee, tornadoes hit our hometown. There were 10 tornadoes within a few miles of our house. My mom was caught out in the tornadoes, but luckily, she was all right. After we survived that terrifying incident, my mom said she wanted to move somewhere safe. So we packed up our van, loaded up our five pets, and moved out to sunny California, where we quickly realized we were now in earthquake territory. As a kid, I was very involved in sports, and that played a big role in shaping who I am. I played competitive soccer for five years. I also did bike tours in Colorado in the summers with my family. We would ride close to 600 miles in a week and camp out every night along with thousands of other crazy people who willingly signed up for the rides. As kids, my brothers and I were always told, Burnett's never walk their bikes, which became the family motto and shaped how I live life. You never give up no matter how much you may want to at times. Growing up, in addition to a great family, I had amazing friends. I was involved in a number of activities, including sports, clubs, and music. I started playing the cello in fourth grade, and I still play to this day. Despite the fact that I was a happy kid with a supportive family, I began internalizing the stress that I felt from trying to be the perfect child. In middle school, I began struggling with severe body image issues and a generalized eating disorder. I spent so much of my childhood and teenage years thinking that I was fat and ugly. I was terrified to eat because I was scared that I would gain weight. I remember keeping a food journal, and if I ate a piece of gum, I would go for a run to burn it off. In high school, it became an obsession that dominated every aspect of my life. I was preoccupied with being skinny, which, as an athlete with an athletic build, was an unachievable goal. My eating disorder became something that I could control when other things felt overwhelming. Of course, looking at it now, I realized that I really had no control at all. It controlled me. Though I had constant struggles with this, my family supported me and encouraged me to do whatever I had my heart set on. I have an extremely close relationship with my mom, who was a social worker, so I always felt naturally inclined to work in this field. After high school, I went to St. Mary's College in Moraga, California, and I majored in psychology, which I absolutely loved. After a brief rebellious stage at the beginning of college, I really came into my own and began working extremely hard in school and in a number of extracurricular activities. I wasn't just doing things because I thought they were expected of me anymore, but because I truly loved them. I was lucky enough to room with my best friend since the third grade, Lindsay, for all four years of college. I made so many amazing friends in college, but I am especially grateful for my other best friend, Alex. She helped me get through some tough times, and she was always there for me. My friends were also great because we had so much fun together. I love to laugh and be crazy more than anything, so needless to say, the time we all spent together was always an adventure. I graduated with honors from St. Mary's College in 2012 and was feeling on top of the world. Reality hit me hard, however, when I realized that I didn't have a plan for the future. It was new for me not to know where I was going in life. I was really lost and terrified after graduation, and I started to feel like my education was all for nothing. The challenges of that time really helped me grow, because once I got through the initial fear, I began thinking about what I really wanted and how I could get it. During this time, I really dealt with my eating disorder and began getting control of it in a healthy way. Fitness became my focus, rather than the unattainable goal of being skinny. The year off was a chance to focus on my emotional and physical health, it was great too, because I got to spend time at home with my family.
When I decided on LMU for graduate school, it was really tough to leave my family again. In that time, my beautiful niece was born, who I adore so much, so it became even more impossible to leave. Moving was a difficult challenge, but I am blessed to have already made such wonderful friends. Having a tight-knit group of people around who support me is very important to me. My friends say that I am loving, friendly, a fighter, considerate, thoughtful, and weird. If I were to go to counseling, it would be for my anxiety issues, which often manifest through body image issues and my eating disorder. I feel like I have made great progress in dealing with it, but when things get really overwhelming, I tend to revert back to it. I chose this profession because I have always loved listening to people and being there for them. I feel that I am naturally empathetic, and I have often thought that I would love to work with teens who struggle with eating disorders. I would like to show them that their self-worth does not lie in what they look like, but who they are, and that if you address your issues and keep working at them, things do get better. Thanks for listening, everyone.